So 10.30, 11.30. <laughs> by 12 30 we should be able to by 11 30 we should be able to leave here and do other assignments so on that note uh, uh, please uh, for those of us that are, are watching state directors and others we are going to use the same link already the materials uh, please uh, directors should headquarters people should get the link also the material for the presentation is already on that link so you can download the material of yesterday and subsequent materials will be placed there. So uh, we are going to use the same link for the presentation. Uh, please, somebody to introduce the presenter. Okay. Morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to day two of the presentation. Uh, today we are going to. Okay. Today's presentation is on uh, digital tools in the 2020 rounds of censuses. And it took place in Egypt, the workshop. Uh, we had representative uh, from ICT, uh, uh, ICT, Kato Department, Planning and Research, as well as uh, Census Department. So the team lead, Mr. Abohu Manese, is going to take the presentation. Let's put our hands together for him, please. Morning, uh, CTA. The directors here present, the census manager, my distinguished colleagues, you're all welcome to this um, presentation. Uh, like it was said, this presentation centers on proceedings from the workshop on digital tools in the 2020 round of censuses, which was held in uh, Cairo, Egypt, between the 4th and 6th of uh, June last year. Here is the outline of the presentation. We look at the introduction to the workshop. Okay, the workshop proceedings, countries' experiences in the 2020 round of censuses. The key takeaways from the country representatives, uh, presentations from partner organizations, key takeaways from the partner organizations, learnings for Nigeria, specific recommendations for Nigeria, and the workshop conclusion and recommendation. The National Population Commission actively participated in the workshop uh, on tools, digital tools in the 2020 round of censuses, which was held in Cairo, Egypt, on 4th to 6th of uh, May 2026, I mean 2023. The event was orchestrated by the African Union Institute for Statistics, Start Africa to facilitate knowledge exchange on the use of digital tools in population and housing censuses across Africa. The necessity for this workshop was heightened by the African Union adaptation of the second strategy for the harmonization of statistics in Africa. Uh, just
Uh, sorry for the break in tra transmission. Um, the workshop saw attendance from diverse groups of stakeholders who had presented from several African Union member states in attendance, including Gabon, Tanzania, uh, sorry, Tunisia, Togo, Ghana, Kenya, Benin, Sierra Leone, Uganda, Niger, Burundi, Zambia, Morocco, Senegal, and Tanzania. In addition to this, several influential international organizations were represented at the workshop. This includes the United Nations Statistical Division, uh, the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, UNECA, the World Bank, the Swedish Tax Agency, uh, the African Union Institute for Statistics. Several enlightening presentations were made. The African Union Commission led the charge with an overview of the draft legal framework for conducting population and house, housing census in Africa. This was crucial, emphasizing the need for a unified legal framework to ensure the effective and standardized conduct of census operations across Africa. The United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, UNECA, also contributed significant, significantly to the workshop by presenting on the digital tools used in the 2020 population and housing census. Their insight uh, showcased the successful integration of modern technology in data collection, resulting in improved quality and timely census results. The harmonized tools for the census in Africa were another notable topic covered. We start Africa, leading the discussion. This conversation underscored the necessity for common tools to ensure compatibility, comparability of census data across African nations. The essence of uh, the workshop was to bring, uh, bring sister African countries together to share their wide experiences while they were conducting the censuses and the need to use common tools, harmonized tools, so that when you are making comparison of the result or the censuses, it will be easier to uh, make a comparison. The country representatives were given opportunity to share their valuable experiences on the 2020 round of censuses. Presentations were taken from Ghana, Kenya, Tanzania, Sierra Leone, Niger, Zambia, Egypt, and Togo. Their, their stories demonstrated how innovations in data collection could lead to significant improvement in time, efficiency, and data accuracy. Nigeria was also given the opportunity to share its preparations towards the census. We also made a presentation. Furthermore, a significant discussion was heard on the draft legal framework for financing the census in Africa, led by State Start Africa, Start Africa. The dialogue focused on the importance of safe financing and institutionalizing the digital population and housing census in national budgets. Participants were actively engaged throughout the workshop, sharing their ideas and experiences, contributing to discussions and offering valuable insights. The amalgamation of these diverse perspectives enriched the workshop and bolstered the achievement of its overall objective. Countries' experiences in the 2020 round of censuses. Uh, here, we want to take, uh, take uh, a walk across Africa and see how other countries also use digital tools in conduct of their censuses. Tanzania. Tanzania's 2022 population and housing census was its sixth post-independent census and its first to fully leverage digital tools. Mobile GIS technology, that's AGIS, played a pivotal role in pre-enumeration activities. This platform facilitated cartographic work 
by converting all share files data collected into MBT, MBT ties, which further aided integrating the data into the sensors and survey processing systems. So just like we have our map info, I mean our uh, sensors part, they also had uh, a, a similar technology where they collected the housing components of uh, the the population, I mean the, the sensors, and integrated it into the population sensors. The government demonstrated commitment to these digital sensors by procuring 210 tablets, 210,000 tablets, which were used by enumerators for data collection. All recruitment was carried out digitally through a portal, and a comprehensive training schedule was set up at national, regional, and district levels to ensure smooth implementation of digital methods. During the enumeration phase, supervisors oversaw the work of enumerators, set the collected data, and facilitated its secure transfer to the server via Bluetooth and internet connectivity. This was the experience uh, from Tanzania. Another commendable achievement was the swift release of uh, the initial census results just a month after the completion of the enumeration. This was made possible due to simultaneous data collection and analysis facilitated by the digital tools. So that was the Tanzania, a short a snapshot of the Tanzania experience. We also have a presentation from Tanzania, I mean from Zambia. In Zambia, the 2022 population and housing census marked a transformative shift from the traditional pen and paper interview, PAPI, to a fully digital census known as Computer Assisted Personal Interview, CAPI, with substantial support from the United Nations Population Fund, which provided 15,000. Uh, and 15,025 Lenovo tablets that have been previously used in 2028 Malawi census. 2020, I mean 2018 Malawi census, which means they shared resources through UNFPA. The tablets that were procured for Malawi were shared with uh, Zambia. The use of data tools was pervasive throughout the census process. During the pre-census phase, an e-mapping and listing approach was employed with residential and non-residential buildings being logged with GPS coordinates. This initiative resulted in a comprehensive geospatial database and enabled the formation of 38,570 enumeration areas. Several technological tools were employed during the census process, including the survey solution for mapping, CS Pro for the pilot census, and the 2022 census application, and web-based inventory and recruitment systems. The Zambia Statistics Agency, ZAMSTAT, executed the census from 18th August to 14th September. 2022, 38,570 enumerators and 6,430 6, supervisors, 1,850 zona representatives took part in the exercise. The 2021 midterm population and housing census is marked a significant transformation in the country's approach to census collection, incorporating digital technologies for the first time to provide a more accurate and efficient data collection process. Spearheaded by statistics Sierra Leone, the census cooperation embraced digital uh, cartographic mapping to prepare and produce enumeration areas, which are crucial for census and service. The result from the census revealed that Sierra Leone's population had grown from 
2.18 million in, 20, in 1963 to 7.55 million in 2021, maintaining an annual growth rate of around 2% throughout this period. This part encountering challenges such as procuring the necessary 20,000 tablets for data, data collection and managing field staff deployment and payment. Sierra Leone managed to successfully conduct its first fully data sensors. The use of computer assisted data collection played a pivotal role in the sensors, serving both as a means to enhance data accuracy and, and a training opportunity for the forthcoming primary sensors slated for 2025. Collaborations with international organizations such as UNECA, African Center of Statistics, Stats Malawi, Kenya, Kenya MBS, Ghana Statistics Services, and Nigeria Population Commission were instrumental in addressing these issues. So they had a massive collaboration with sister African countries to share their experiences. Ghana. Ghana's 2021 population and housing census represent a revolutionary shift from the traditional methods to a more digital approach. This leap was driven by the change automation innovative agenda designed to bring digital transformation and environmental friendliness to the census process. The census process extensively leveraged ICT tools and strategies across its stages. Copy and batch program for data entry and cleaning were instrumental in data collection, processing, and quality assurance. Furthermore, the census management systems were used to integrate all census implementation teams activities on a common platform. So they had a census management system, which integrated all the sensor implementation teams into a common platform for their operations. The 2021 population and housing census also marked the first time that Ghana employed the GIS applications to automate pre-enumeration, enumeration, and post-enumeration census processes. Other digital tools uh, deployed included the census coverage system, which harnessed geospatial data for census coverage determination, a dynamic dashboard for field work monitoring, and a citizen, citizen's platform for engagement. A, a public cloud server was also deployed to manage the census process. Kenya. Kenya's 2019 census was a significant part of the 2020 round of censuses championed by the United Nations. Tablets assembled at local universities were used in the data collection process, supported by power banks to prevent power loss during the enumeration. The tablets were secured with mobile device management system and a private access point name, which was configured to ensure that the SIM cards could only communicate with sensor servers, adding another layer of security for data in transit. The data capture system was developed using CS Entry, the CS Pro 2 for data capture, running on Android operating system. The yeah, copy application was customized by Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, the staff with technical assistance from the US Census Bureau. However, challenges were encountered, such as a lean team of programmers, system administrators, and technical support team, which created a strain during the enumeration processes. Late procurement of sensors equipment like servers and tablets also delayed configuration, configuration time, and led to a last minute rush. Nonetheless, valuable lessons were learned and best practices identified. Among these was the importance of thorough training of enumerators in using CAPI software. 
the necessity for pre-testing the sensors to identify potential issues with the instruments. The need to select reliable and secure IT equipment and software, and the importance of planning for areas with low internet connectivity. The 2029 census experience has thus equipped Kenya with critical insight for future digital, digital sensors undertakings. Togo. Togo's fifth general population and housing census concluded between October 23rd and November 16th, marked a significant milestone in the country's uh, census situation as it fully embraced digitization for the first time. Delineate enumeration areas were digitized in house, demonstrating Togo's capability for census operations. The enumeration phase saw the use of copy uh, format for through an array of applications tailored for different fields. This included supervisors, controllers, team leaders, and enumerators, each equipped with their de dedicated application. A major accomplishment was the implementation of a dashboard for real-time data monitoring and quality assurance. This allowed supervisors and the national monitoring team to track the progress of the enumeration and control inconsistent inconsistencies on key variables. Additionally, a special PES was conducted using digital applications for data collection and matching. Data management, including data transfer and publication, was facilitated by digital means. The results of the uh, RGAPH uh, 5 were promptly published on various online platforms like NC website and data for all. Furthermore, a dedicated archiving system, NADA, was established for data documentation and storage. So after they finished, they released the result. They released the result on different social media platforms which they created. Senegal. Senegal fully transitioned to data mapping in 2022, enabling real-time data monitoring and control, efficient data collection, and immediate data processing. This process, lasting for 10 months, led to a, a digital database of sensor district maps, a logistics sheet, a household sample database, among others. An integer part of this process is PIGO. That's an integrated platform for census operations management, a web platform developed for the management and monitoring of Senegal's fifth general population and housing census. This platform incorporates different modules for each specific phase of the census operations. A range of digital tools were used from tablets, PCs, and PDAs to open data kits, ODK. Furthermore, Senegal developed its own software and used additional resources, such as SL form with ODK, the World Bank Survey Solution, and Census Bureau's uh, CS2. In terms of recruitment and training, over 62,500 applications for census agents, controllers, and ethic were received through a dedicated platform. Equipment management was also a focus with 30,000 tablets procured for the census. The specifications of which were verified at the manufacturing company in China. Senegal went to the manufacturing company in, in China to ensure that what they were getting was what they had paid for. These tablets were managed through a QR coding system and dedicated application. Benin. 
The presentation of Bini, from Benin outlined the approach and experiences of the UN start Benin while orchestrating the fifth population and housing census in their country. Four primary bodies were set up for the census, including the National Census Committee, the Department Census Committees, Local Census Committees, and the Central Census Office. The team broadcast their technical skills by using specialized applications such as Agis Pro, by S3, Survey123, and pre EA tools, and later, of which was utilized for recreating innovations on boundaries for field data collection. To the uh, personnel recruitment and training executed in a cascading top down manner. Data was collected and updated regarding social infrastructure and housing structures, undergoing quality control checks, both in the field transferred through various methods, including on removal disk for electricity coverage. After a post Census survey, the data was post processed and cleaned to generate uh, clean files using CSPRO software. A copy of the data was archived at the National Data Center following the established norms. The results were disseminated through various mediums, such as thematic reports, spatial maps for the main indicators, a dedicated page on the INSTAT website and dissemination missions across the country. Key takeaways from the country's representation, presentations. The key takeaways from the presentation of these various countries are their experiences with conducting a data census is as follows. Digital transformation and technology adaptation. All the nations reported a significant shift towards digitalization in their most recent census operations. Tools such as AGIS, CSPRO, Survey Solutions, ODK, and custom made applications were widely employed for mapping, data collection, and data processing. GIS based digital cartography emerged as a new standard. For, uh, for defining enumeration areas and tracking enumeration progress. Equipment procurement and management. Acquisition and management of digital equipment, especially tablets, were crucial aspects of these censuses. Some countries managed to procure massive quantities of tablets, for example, uh, 210,000. Management. However, challenges related to legit procurement and distribution were also acknowledged. Training and capacity building. Successful implementation of operations on effective training of this personnel. On the use of digital tools. Comprehensive training sessions were held at national, regional, and district levels to ensure the situation for new technologies. Let them even be seen. Real time monitoring and quality control. Each of the projects enable real time monitoring and quality assurance during census to. This allowed advisors and the national monitoring teams to track like this and enumeration of the progress and ensure like, okay, that's that's like. random uh, tests, both in field and off and off the page, but it's not they are conducted to maintain the integrity. Data management and The transition to digital tools, necessitated robust data management protocols, data transfer. 
storing and publication of all manuals digitally. Our nation's built dedicated archive systems and databases for secure and efficient data storage. One other shared. Public awareness and engagement. Efforts to ensure public awareness and participation were critical for all the successful execution of the census. Countries like Tanzania and Senegal ran extensive awareness campaigns to encourage public cooperation. Cooperation and support. Inter international collaborations were essential for the successful transition to digital census operations. The United Nations Funds, UNFPA, and other international organizations played crucial roles in providing resources and expertise. Challenges and lessons learned. The presentations highlighted numerous challenges, including internet availability in remote areas, late equipment procurement, and maintaining data quality. Nevertheless, these obstacles were largely overcome through early planning, technical readiness, political will, and innovative solutions. Presentations from partner organizations. The sessions were divided into two parts. The parts, one part was the, the participating countries, and then the other part was partner organizations. United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, UNECA. The United Nations Economic for Africa delivered a thoroughly, a thorough presentation focusing on application digital tools in the census and survey context. The presentation by Mola, who, who had to mention Mola because uh, he, we worked together. So um, his presentation was very interesting to all. Uh, he was uh, in the presentation, so that's why we had to specifically mention him here. Um, his presentation emphasized four main areas, namely mobile device provisioning, field support management system, data collection monitoring system, and sensors results dissemination. The mobile device provisioning section elaborated on the provisioning on the provisional system which includes a file server, a web application, and mobile apps. It, has, it streamlines the process of preparing mobile devices for field use, thus facilitating the digital co data collection process. The census field data collection monitoring was another vital aspect highlighted. The sensor dashboard was introduced as a powerful tool that provides real-time information about census performance, enabling teams to identify areas of underperformance of data quality, underperformance or data quality concerns promptly. Lastly, ACAS approach to sensor results dissemination was covered. They stressed the importance of creating user personas, delivering granular data, utilizing application programming interface, API, and supporting multiple devices. The Swedish, Swedish uh, tax agency. The Swedish tax agency presented their experiences in leveraging the population register as a primary source of information about the population in view of the traditional population and housing census. The overarching purpose of the Swedish, Swedish population registrar is to accurately reflect the population's accidents, at identity, and family relations to provide a robust foundation for decision making and societal actions. The register contains comprehensive data about individuals, such as personal data, uh, identity numbers, names, residence, civil status, familiar relations, 
place of birth, nationality, and details concerning immigration from abroad or removal from the register due to death or migration. The presentation also highlighted how the population register is uh, inter interlinked with various societal bodies, such as the land survey, the post office, the general public, and the notification register. This international network helps maintain the census accuracy and completeness. The dissemination of information from the population register spans across various sectors, including authorities, regions, municipalities, insurance companies, credit bureaus, banks, and other private organizations. This wide distribution of data underpins a variety of societal functions, including statistics, generation, planning, communication, and democratic rights. The history of the population register dates back to 1686, with nationwide rules for population registration. The centralization of the register has been effective since 1991 and continues to this day. The United Nations Statistics Division. The UNSDA, UNSD presentation provided insightful overview of the 20 World Population and Housing Census Program, which was approved by the Statistical Commission and adopted by the UN Economic and Social Council in 2015. The initiative urges member states to conduct at least one population and housing census in the period between 2015 to 2024 to uphold the integrity, reliability, accuracy, and value of population and housing results, and to consider its importance for the, 2020, uh, for the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. UNSD, UNS, UNSD shared findings showing the increased use of technology in census operations especially in electronic data collection, with nearly 80% of countries using tablets or smartphones for data collection in 2020 run, and almost half of countries adopting online questionnaire. The, the use of GIS for mapping and dissemination has also grown significantly, with 86% of countries planning to collect enumeration area data and 90% planning to develop interactive online databases. The trend shows an increase, increasing number of countries moving towards register-based approach for censuses. The section concluded with UNSD, UNSD's global recommendation for the 2020, 2030 census round, focusing on the gradual transition to register-based approaches, integration of geospatial information with census data, development of emergency and contingency plans based on the experience of the COVID-19 pandemic, adaptation of, adoption of online questionnaire, reviewing existing definitions of population and exploring potential additional data sources, such as mobile positioning data. Key takeaways, from partner organizations, their presentations. Digital tools and methodologies for census operation. Digital tools and methodologies are increasingly become, being incorporated into census operations. There is a growing focus on the use of mobile devices for data collection and monitoring in real time, improving efficiency and visibility. There is also an increased emphasis on maximizing the accessibility and usability of sensor data through digital platforms. The growing use of GIS for mapping and dissemination and the exploration of new technologies, such as mobile positioning data, also signifies a trend towards more data-based methodologies. Register-based approach for censuses. Register-based censuses are becoming a valuable alternative to traditional census methodologies. 
a well maintained and comprehensive population register integrated with various social societal bodies can serve as a primary source of population data, reducing the need for conventional census operations as evident in Sweden. A steady increase in the adaptation of register-based approach has been noticed, and a gradual transition towards these methods is encouraged for future census rounds. The impact of COVID-19 and con contingency planning. The significant impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on census operations has underscored the importance of robust contingency planning. The disruption caused by the pandemic highlights the necessity for, of having flexible and adaptive strategies that can respond effectively to emergencies and unexpected events. Integration of geospatial information with census data. The integration of geospatial information with census data is increasingly recognized for its value in efficient data collection and improved data visualization. This integration is promoted for enhancing the planning, execution, and dissemination of uh, stages of the census operations. Ensuring data integrity, accuracy, and usability. Maintaining data integrity, accuracy, and usability is of utmost importance in census operations. Trust in the data collected, whether from traditional census methods or from populations, underpins the value for society planning and decision making. It is crucial to create granular data that can be easily assessed and used, thereby maximizing the utility of the sensor results. The quality of sensor data also plays a pivotal role in aligning with broader development agendas, such as the 2020, uh, 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Uh, during the, 20, the 2006 census, the Commission attempted to create uh, a granular data dissemination tool by creating a, a web portal where the various uh, indicators we are drilled down to the minus, minutest level for dissemination and specifically for uh, more insightful data analysis. So this is what the trend, this is the way other countries are going. So we started that and I think we can build on it. Learnings for Nigeria. <clears throat> Insights gleaned from other countries and organizations offer additional perspective that could further enhance Nigeria's plan census efforts. This includes adaptation of innovative digital systems, which we are doing. We have uh, uh, some of those tools we, we say other countries also deployed, but we can still do more. Exploring digital-based methods. While Nigeria is venturing into digital mobility from its sensors, the Swedish tax agency's experience provides an alternative avenue worth considering. A comprehensive population register or a robust vital registration system to start with can serve as a continuous level source of population data, greatly augmenting data from sensors and enhancing the efficiency of public service delivery, reinforcing contingency measures. Nigeria's existing measures, such as the stress test and vulnerability test that we did, align with the best uh, global need for comprehensive contingency planning. However, the, the recent disruption caused by COVID-19 pandemic underscores the need for Nigeria to expand its emergency and contingency strategies to ensure census operations resilience in the face of unexpected events. Leveraging geospatial information. Nigeria's efforts in digital mapping and area demarcation are promising. This underscores, this endeavors align with global trends and the UNS 
the recommendations for integrating geospatial information with sensor data. MPC, MPC to continue in this approach, in this part, and further exploits more geospatial technologies and systems that can be further integrated into our data collection systems for more efficient sensor operations and data accuracy. Prioritizing data usability and transparency. Nigeria is indeed designing a wide array of platforms for disseminating sensors data. However, it's crucial to ensure that these platforms are user-friendly and that they provide data in a manner that's easily accessible to various stakeholder groups. The commitment to transparency and data accessibility demonstrated through API utilization and delivery of granular data to further improve the value derived from the sensor data. Enhancing training and recruitment strategies. The use of digital platforms for recruitment and training as seen in Nigeria's preparation is a step in the right direction. However, based on global experiences, there's an opportunity to continuously improve these platforms, ensuring that they offer comprehensive training on digital tools, source methodologies, and promote high level of data literacy among sensors functionaries. Strengthening communication and coordination. Nigeria's introduction of a call center and situation room is a strong move towards effective communication and coordination. However, it could learn from other communication and coordination structures shared during the workshop to further enhance real-time information exchange among field workers, management, partners, and the public. Specific recommendations. The workshop pre presentation, along with Nigeria's advancements and challenges encountered so far, guides the following recommendations. Nigeria should strengthen collaboration, maintain strong and consist consistent collaboration with partners involved in the census process, create a comprehensive catalog of partners, documenting their contributions and areas of assistance to ensure accountability and enhance future coll collaboration. Strengthen cybersecurity, prioritize cybersecurity measures to protect sensitive population and housing data. Focus on, mi on minimizing vulnerabilities and addressing potential threats. The data we are collecting is huge and is vital. And if we have spent so much in collecting this data, it is imperative that we also should go out of our way to protect it. I'm saying this because um, I'm working at the back end and I understand the importance of some of these things. So uh, if we procure billions of tablets, I mean, use billions to pro protect, I mean, to procure tablets, use billions to train people and uh, in field operations, it will not be too much if you can use one billion to protect that data. That's the point I'm making. Visualize administrative data. Explore the integration of administrative data, registers, and other alternative sources, such as service data, to complement sensors data, data collection as encouraged by UNSD. Highlights and uniqueness of Nigeria sensors. Catalog and showcase the unique features and innovations that characterize the Nigeria census process. Build a sense of national pride and seek international recognition for the advancement made in census data collection. When the uh, Sierra Leone team were making their, their presentation, they singled out Nigeria for their contribution towards their successful census. And uh, here we are. We uh, have created some of these platforms. We should go global with it. We should uh, create awareness about this and showcase that beside the negative things that are coming out of Nigeria, there are also good things that Nigeria can offer to the world. Leverage advanced data analysis techniques. Harness advanced data analysis techniques such as artificial intelligence and machine learning 
to enable timely and precise analysis of the vast amount of sensor data collected. Design user-friendly data emulation platforms, emulate best practices, and design user-friendly accessible platforms for disseminating sensor data. Incorporate interactive maps and intuitive interfaces to uh, facilitate easy interpretation of data by diverse users. Familiarize census officers with all concepts. Ensure key census officers and staff are way vast in all aspects of the census processes, from EAD to enumeration. Conduct detailed presentations and training sessions on each process component to facilitate effective execution of the task. Establish comprehensive disaster preparedness plans. Develop comprehensive contingent, contingent plans to address potential disruptions in census activities caused by natural disasters or health emergencies. Ensure the availability of backup systems, alternative data collection methods, and protocols for seamless continuation of census operations. Workshop conclusions and recommendations. Following rigorous discussions and analysis presented, uh, that the representatives reached consensus on the following recommendations. It was recommended that the African Union Commission, uh, AU, should finalize two key legal documents, the framework for conducting population and housing census in Africa, and the framework for financing the census in Africa. The AUC was requested to develop advocacy guidelines to ensure the active participation of African Union member states in the various rounds of population and housing census. Recognizing the unique challenges faced by post-conflict African nations, AU was, AU was tasked to develop a special advocacy to ensure these countries conduct their population and housing census Collaboration was encouraged between AU, United Nations, United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, UNECA, the African Development Bank, and regional economic communities to establish a pool of African experts on population and housing census in Africa. The experience of Sierra Leone shows us that uh, we can work together. Uh, the CTA has brought that to bear on us. We, are, we have had um, our colleagues, our brothers from Ghana and Tanzania to help us, uh, you know, to uh, undertake some of the processes at the back end. Before then, we had uh, people from US who had, uh, uh, they came in, in 1991 and 2006 to help us do this uh, analysis. For now, the guys that came from Ghana and Tanzania they are capable of doing what those guys did, and we should encourage this. That is the essence of what the community was talking about. The AUS was asked to develop a compendium of best practices for using sensor data tools in the round of in the 2020 round of censuses, emphasizing the value of knowledge, knowledge sharing, and learning from successful uh, experiences. The AUC, UNECA, and African Development Bank. And REX were urged to promote South South cooperation for population and housing census, which is what I emphasized earlier on. The United Nations Statistics Division was uh, requested to collaborate with AU and UNECA to involve African Union member states in the development of guidelines for the 2030 round of population and housing census. AU, UNECA, AFDB, and REX were asked to organize regional workshops on thematic issues for the digital population and housing census. The AU and the Swiggy Tax Agency were recommended to organize a training workshop on population registers. An advocacy request was made for the AU to champion the development of population registers within African Union member states. Finally, the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa was commended for its noble support in promoting the digital census initiative. 
This recommendation fall out of shared experiences and learnings from the shop, serve as a robust guideline for further strengthening the digital population and housing sensors in Nigeria, specifically, and Africa in general. Thank you for listening. Oh, okay. oh, okay. oh. <laughs> I thank you very much. Some of us have moved that will carry. If we are part of this presentation, we are going to carry our phone. <laughs> So, I went to the previous comedies. I don't think maybe those that went to Cairo have anything more than the answer. You understand? This is even more process than the process of the answer. So, on that note, I think it's a very interesting But I want to tell you, EG, when especially to the people in the States, are they hearing? Yes, yes. Tell you, the DG said we should scale on this presentation. Only by the seven states, uh, the six and eight, and this is the first. And one of the things he said again to discuss with you is that this opportunity will not be the one that are uh, in the headquarters. Uh, that this opportunity should also be extended to the people in the states. So, what it means is that our future nominations for training will go beyond the headquarters. International training will also look at people from the states. So, uh, I just said I should mention it. So, as usual, we give two people on the floor, or three, three or two, and then two here so that we can quickly listen to the next paper. You have the floor. Thank you. If there is any online comment or something, we can take one. One or two, two. Thank you. So, anybody? Anybody? Yes. Any other person so that we acknowledge both of them? Is there any other person? So, only one from the floor. Is there anyone online? Okay, give him the mic. Musa Vincent Ogaji, this was a school officer from Census Department. Sir, I want to commend you for that uh, robust uh, presentation. There is one aspect I want to find out from you. It's apart from the challenges on the lack of network availability in some parts of these countries that you have just uh, told us, what are their various limitations in the process of this uh, digital sensor taking activities in the various countries? What are their limitations? The limitations in the process and what you think we, the National Population Commission, can do to make sure we achieve nearly 100% coverage and generate a more reliable census data in the country. Thank you, sir. I yes, yeah, good afternoon. Good morning, sir. My my only source of the performance was suspicion of rising Yes, I'm on the statistic data. Of Nigeria, which I feel started there. Now, when scientists 
don't have much changes that are encountered by all these industries, especially African states. Like our own too. Some of those are so then you have it. This is procurement, financing, like here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Now, lastly, the analysis aspect of it. We have our own challenges too. Which one of us? Okay. Analysis. We are going to well on. We have people that came from Ghana and Tanzania, which are doing us. They are like uh, people that came from US as so that case of US. I want us, I want to see so that this analysis which much project so that we have statistician uh among all that can be when well and when us to most of them. Thank you very much. I have uh my, okay. I have my questions and comments. Yes. Most important thing I have seen that virtually what other countries are doing, uh, in terms of people that have all of them. Uh, the only one that I can see that I don't know what it is, I'm allowed to present that to yes. the is that issue of uh, citizen dashboard. What does that entail? We need some clarification because that's the only thing I can see that uh, we have not uh, done in terms of our census implementation, especially if it is different from the call center. And the other one is comment. You know, if you look at all the countries that uh, presentations were made, I think Tanzania has the highest in terms of tablet, 210,000. Our tablet is about 800,000. So I just want colleagues and everybody to look at that in terms of the perspective of the work we have is that clear i always tell my colleagues in the ict even tablet management is a no problem for the ict department even tablet management if you can do it successfully we are good in this census so eight hundred thousand tablets is by no means a small business managing it making sure it goes to the ea making sure it is retrieved because we have to retrieve it and making sure that we can assess it anytime we need in case there is data incompleteness and so on and so forth. So it's just a food for thought. I think the whole of what Nijar wants for their tablet, for their census, is, is little below what Asina State wants. I was even joking with the colleague from Nijar that uh, maybe when we finish that of Casina census, we'll just give you to, to go, especially, but now you are not part of ECOA, so we cannot give you. So it's just to tell you the magnitude of the work in Nigeria in terms of census. Uh, so I think uh, with that, I will like you to expand on that. And I believe you have done justice to the presentation because you have really brought everything to bear. We have also gone to Egypt with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. One question, there's one question. <laughs> and I'm trying to understand that's how sensors relatable to Nigeria. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Thank you. 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 Because uh, in the 2020 round of censuses, it's technology and innovation all the way. The UN says they recommend that countries use technology to improve results, accuracy, and timeliness. And the UN is a diplomatic organization. When they say they recommend, there's no option in there. Okay? They're basically telling you that's the way you have to go. It's just they're using deep no speak. Okay. Right? Okay. No, it's the microphone. Okay. Is it better? Okay. So yeah, so we we expect that from every country. And any country that diverges from that is going against UN edict. Let me call it that. To make sure that we use technology. It is because of all those things Mr. Boho had said, 
to ensure, first of all, that uh, uh, we improve quality of results, to improve their timeliness, to improve their comparability, to improve their dissemination and accessibility, all these things. Studies have shown this. Uh, experiences have shown this from different countries, that when you use technology, all these come to bear. So it's very, very important subject when discussing censuses because henceforth, no censors will be worth talking about without uh, sufficient use of technological and methodological innovations. That's a general point. The second general point is that uh, in spite of the richness of your presentation, I did not hear you make some emphasis on uh, or put emphasis around the challenges of acquisition of technology in Africa, especially for big countries like Nigeria. You had the countries are buying 15,000, Nigeria needs nearly a million, really 800,000 people is, is an underestimate. If we have to equip everybody in Nigeria, that should work in a digital sensor space, particularly at the peak of the process during data collection. So it's not just going to be the numerators, it's not just going to be the supervisors, it's also going to be the other field hands, the key hands, you know, all these other people, anybody who has a responsibility in the field, including monitors, ideally should have that. We see that for Nigeria is out of the so can you imagine the logistics of acquiring and managing one million tablets? It's difficult enough for those using fifteen thousand. At the beginning of the census round, so uh, Lesotho was one of the first countries to do this, and they only needed six thousand tablets. It was a nightmare for them, even to acquire them important and at the end of the day they had to go for three different models because they could not find one model off the shelf that could make up the six thousand that they needed so borrowing from our experience here yeah, we know that it's very very challenging to acquire them and acquisition is not the end of the story first of all the challenge with acquisition is that the costs are prohibitive Cost of technology, I'm not just talking about tablets, so that should have been highlighted. It's very prohibitive. Secondly, because our censuses are never well planned because of many other dynamics, not just Nigeria, most Africa. There are so many challenges listening to the politicians, they hold the cake and the knife, and until they say go, you can't go. So sometimes we don't plan well. You need sufficient timeline to procure procurement rather easier so he knows how long it takes to procure you know 800,000 tablets so the procurement you need sufficient lead time to procure to get them ready protect them that is after provisioning them and also to train the people that are going to deploy them effectively on their use and all that takes time and these are the challenges that have been preventing many African countries from, because the initial cost is a huge initial investment to get technology, not just tablets and other things as well. Satellite imagery, they sell them per square, zip per square kilometer, you know, like, like uh, maybe five, 10, $15. So you can imagine the entire space of Nigeria, if you are to get high resolution satellite imagery, you know, just a one-time use, very prohibitive. So this is why UNAP has been encouraging countries to adopt a sharing modality where one can, countries can come together, pool their resources, and then procure this technology, you know, these tools collectively, so one country can use them after another. And this is what we are asking AU to do, to come up with a continent-wide policy for sharing digital tools for census implementation in Africa. Uh, and that would include establishing centers of excellence in specific African countries where the other countries can actually go and do hands-on learning of some real skills using the same, same technology and so forth. So I'll leave it at that.
fast forward, I know you've spoken about so many lessons for Nigeria and you're right about each and every one of them. And I just want to consolidate them into four for Nigeria. Number one, peace. Everybody loves a peace, isn't it? Even if it's a thousand miles from the target. Right? Keep it short and simple. Nigeria thinks it's is way too complicated. Too much. Very complicated. We're adding more uh, KPIs. Yes. Way too complicated. If you listen to all those sectors, including the two that have been part of since July, when I was out of Nigeria, really, really simple. They do the simple things and they work well. Our end to end data capture and management system is even too complex for the ITP. Am I right, Mr. Bones? Like the experts that we have brought here to help them to do that. So, can we find a way now that we have time? It's good to innovate, but innovation has several limitations. And particularly in Africa, is what I call the liability of newness. Anytime you start something new, especially with technology, there will be liabilities of newness because it takes time to sink in until you get to mastery level. So, CM, you may want to rethink that end-to-end -end data system, CS Pro can do it. The reason that we bypassed CS Pro when I came is because I came here in January and you wanted to do your census in March. And if you went the CS Pro way, there's no way you're going to provision one million tablets in less than a month. Now that you have the time, you can make the MP, the MT, whatever they are called, MB tablets and upload them on the tablet on the ground. ground. You have time to do that. So stop the sophistication so you can do your thing. So we can stop all this or all of this or every time there's a new problem found. And then we bring in more solve it and we cannot solve it. Enough said. Enough said. Number two. I think I've already mentioned that. That, that if we are if planning, we are planning to, use to use technology for that, for that, if you don't have it, it don't apply. That means that you means have to know, know what technology, technology you need, need, where you can where you find, you find it. it. Do you have skill for it? for it? If you don't have skill for it, you have to plan for training and so on and so forth. But the more important one is, do you have money for it? sufficient lead time and what is the procurement time can you get it off the shelf or it has to be custom made which means that you also have to you know plan for manufacturing time and of course if it is abroad and not in kenya where we now can do this in our local universities you also have to build in the freight time all that logistics is part of acquisition of technology so you need sufficient lead time number three the feature for census is registration. Nobody is going to do censuses in another decade or so the way we have done them previously. That is because there are systems now. That is because there is technology now. Nobody is going to give us $1 billion plus to do a census in the future. Even government will not. So we need to begin to explore that. The opportunities in this census to begin to experiment, even on a small scale now that we have time, with the other strategies, build them in, in localized ways, to test them in order to prepare not for this census, but for the next one. And I think that uh, the partnership with NIMSI, the, the budding partnership with NIMSI is important because they are the registration agents, isn't it? And NPC is also the agency that uh, looked after CRVS registration. Can you look at ways of beginning to establish a population register, even if you have to start with small states where it is feasible? 
Because in the next census, if you can be able to do 30% of your census based on a register, that would be, you'd be a long way into what you need to do. The next UN recommendation, because it's ending today, this round of censuses is ending this year. Next year, we start the new one, which will go up to 2035, 34. So in the next, principles and recommendations. You're going to see register-based census feature more than the ever have for Africa. And the last point is, as you have seen there, and we know already, Nigeria census is as big as they now, and especially in Africa. No census is bigger, no census is more complex. No sense, no sense. It's more expensive. So the lesson so the this work is work should be the other way. Around. Should be countries learning from Nigeria, not Nigeria learning from countries. Because every little thing that all these other countries are doing in country, Nigeria should have already done it. Every little thing that they are experiencing, you should have already experienced. You should have the answers and solutions for these other countries in order to maintain your big brother stature for Africa. And I would love to also send some people from here to other countries like I've done to other countries to go and help them to become ambassadors of Nigeria in the implementation of censuses across the world. Thank you. Uh, you can attempt, you wonder, you can attempt. Some of them are comments, you understand. Okay. Uh, thanks, the city. Uh, the CM and my colleagues for all your comments. Um, for a start, um, our team was uh, well composed, as in we had myself from ICT, um, we have Philip from planning and research, we have Amina from uh, census, and uh, the other young man came from the states, from Gombe State, he's from Kato. So um, at least by the commission's uh, composition, it was a little bit uh, balanced. So thank the management for making that uh, decision because when we went there, we were sharing ideas and uh, we also had to make a presentation. And uh, our contributions individually enriched our presentation. We also share our presentation that we made over there to the platform so that we can see what we uh, say on your behalf. Uh, with regards to the question um, Ogaji uh, raised regarding the challenges about uh, data, uh, data issues, we mentioned it. Um, specifically, some countries attempted, for example, where there was internet issues. They attempted to transmit their data through Bluetooth. Some um, were even using paper. But these are things that here, you know, because of our complex uh, situation, there are some things that we cannot attempt to do. And I don't know if I mentioned something about uh, harmonization. If you collect data on the common platform, then you can easily be able to make some comparabilities. If you collect the data on the common platform, you share, like, for example, the guy that came from Steve that came to help us. They have already conducted census, and most of the things were the challenges we were having is what they experienced. So he was using that to bear on us, and it made it very easy. In fact, the young man from Ghana, they used Capi and uh, using Sales Pro. So because we are using the same platform, when he came, he looked at what he did. In fact, he said we had ninety percent done. He only made some, you know, key uh, changes because we are operating on the same platform. So that is what the workshop is trying to, you know, uh, to preach. 
that we should all operate on the same platform so that we can share ideas, we can share resources, for example, sharing tablets. If we are not using the same platform, we cannot share tablets. So that is the essence of the workshop. And my colleague, uh, Philip, is also here. He can also uh, shed light on some of the things uh, that I mentioned. No, no, it doesn't have, uh, it's okay. So uh, we will take note of those other things and maybe make an uh, amendment on the presentation and then share it on the platform. Thank you very much. Is it old or maybe talk, Jan? Let me talk. Stop me up. Stop me up. Then you can get good. Stop me up. What I'm saying is, are you of the opinion that what CTA is saying is it doable at this point in time as head of CDAT? That's what I want to know. I know heading the CDAT team. Uh, the good thing is, CDAT is the best child of uh, sensors, ICT, planning cartoon and everybody. So if you don't have a challenge, the departments have a challenge and we have to come together and come come up with a solution. So thank you very much. Please let's put us together for Mr. Buhu. So we have the final presentation for today uh, and it's going to be on improving use and impact of census result. Uh, we have two participants that went, uh, Hawa Suleiman and uh, Emeka Anyapora. So, but Hawa is presenting on behalf of the team. So please, let's put our hands together for her as she presents. Audio. So from here, you're on to the Okay. Thank you. 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 My name is Hawa Suleiman, and I'm presenting on behalf of myself and my colleague Emeka Anyakora. Our presentation is on the is on improving the use and impact of census results in Nigeria. The workshop took place in Lusaka, Zambia, April 23. <laughs> It's clear now. Okay. Is it clear now, sir? Yeah. Okay. Um, the workshop took place in Lusaka, Zambia in April 2022. And the attendees were Mr. Musa Payos Shekara from the census department. My humble self from cartography department and Emeka Anyakora from ICT department. And just like Mr. Aboho mentioned earlier, I think the, the team formation was just um, was just right if you consider the, the topic use and use of sensors and dissemination and the and, and um, the impact on the users. You know, the census department are the key people who are responsible in the commission for taking out the census. Then the cartography department are those who provide us with the foundation. And also with the new innovation now, when you talk about geospatial dissemination, you need to carry somebody with um, a, a, a GIS background along. And of course, when you talk about digital, digital census, the ICT department are the ones that are championing um, the census. So I have the following um, outlines that will be guiding my presentation, introduction, the, the, the data dissemination and the use in the census cycle, the benefits of the census data, successful dissemination and the importance of strategy, census research center, additional dissemination channels, 
and we'll provide with uh, we'll provide the house with useful links we were we took from there that can also help us in us and also um, we'll conclude the the workshop was sponsored by um uneka in collaboration with ons that's the office of national statistics based in the united kingdom and participants were drawn from 21 african countries the workshop took place uh, was a five-day workshop program whereby we had um other african countries like i mentioned earlier 21 african countries came together to share their experiences so basically it was in um two sessions we had those who had done the census so they made presentations on how they went about the dissemination of their census and how it impacted um, the users. And also we had those who were preparing, which Nigeria fell into this category. And, and our team also made a presentation on the <clears throat> strategies and plans that we intend to use to disseminate the census. I'll start this presentation with um, a quote we took from there, from the United Nations Statistics Division. And it says, a census is not complete until the information collected is made available to users in a form suited to their needs. So most often than not, people just think that the when, when you conduct a census and you let people know the total number of people in the country, it ends there. But there's so much more that the census data um, involves that most people do not know. Census provides crucial demographic and socioeconomic data, and the dissemination strategy is essential to maximize the data utilization. So there is, we, um, we have the dissemination cycle, cycle, which is a seven point agenda of going about your census dissemination. First of all, we have the planning, and when we say planning, it takes us down to the day of, days of um, coming up with our um, census frame, which is the EAD data. So as you are planning for the, as you are planning for EAD, you should also put dissemination at the back of your mind. After that, having successfully planned and um, came, come up with your census frame, the next um, stage is the design. When you are designing your questionnaire, you need to put it at the back of your mind. Who are our targets? What do we want this sense of data? What's our what's um, our aim? What do we want to achieve? Having successfully designed the census questionnaire, then the next step is collection, which is collection of <coughs> the census data. When we are done, the next point agenda is processing. You process the the data, then you analyze it, and then disseminate. After dissemination, it doesn't end there. The last <coughs> cycle is evaluation you need to evaluate what you have disseminated to ensure that whether you, you um you reached people's expectations like you said we have planning and design in the planning and design um, stages one of the key um, um the key stages there are the user engagement which means you have to interact with those who are going to use this census data it's not meant for npc alone you need to meet people in the universities banks religious leaders everybody so by the time you talk about evaluation you now evaluate and see that these people that i carried along you go back to them for feedback and is their feedback that will now use will now be based on your evaluation to see if at all what you people were, were doing from scratch if i have met your standard and your um expectations so this um sense of dissemination cycle is very very important we call it the seven point agenda when planning for your census. Still more on the sense of dissemination. We were told that the dissemination centers around the four hours. And the first one is getting the right data. We ensure that we are counting the right people, not counting animals as we are popularly mocked in Nigeria. Then to the right people, when you have gotten the data, you don't disseminate information that is meant for universities. You take it to the banks. You're sending wrong information at the right time. And the last one is in the right format. Everything centers around the right, right, right. If you don't do these things rightly, you're not doing, you have not conducted a census. When you get the right,
getting the right data. Okay. All right, it's fine. We get the right data to the right people at the right time. This is one of um, the key the, the key components that we also reiterate to our data quality managers and the census process, that if you don't get data to people at the right time, it's going to be of no use. And also in the right format. In the right format, it's, it's trying to tell that you present it to them in a way that they can, it can make sense to them. You don't, you don't give um, a man in the village census data in tabular form. It does not, it's not, it does not make sense to, to, to him or her. So when you say the right format, you have to start thinking on ways to disseminate your data to different people, considering their educational level. Those in the village, if you feel that, if you tell them what in their local language, you're disseminating data. If you provide to them brochures and um, flyers, posters, to tell them that in this particular place, so you have more male than female, some people get um, messages um, faster through pictorial um, representation. Some people prefer text. So we need to know who our our, our target um, stakeholders for us to present those data to them in the best format. And it's what they call dissemination business processes. Here we have five different processes. And the first one is to out update your output system. You might already have an existing output system. It means the means, the, the, the platform via which you want to disseminate your data first and foremost. So if you have an already existing one, update it to, to, show, to, to, be, to ensure that you are on the same level with the trend and also international best practices. Then second, you produce your dissemination products. Like we earlier mentioned, you bring out your sensor dissemination products. Thank you. Then you manage the release of these products. For example, you give, you don't release everything at the same time. It takes time for you to release. Maybe first and foremost, what they call the preliminary tables. That's what you first of all dish out. Then secondly, you now check based on what's happening in the economy or the country, you now release as at when due. Then you promote the dis dissemination products. When you are um, when you are disseminating, there's need for you to promote. That's create awareness. Let people know that this exercise that has been that, that took place in also time and also this is a, this is a part of it that I'm presenting to you. Because if you don't promote it, people will not know. People um, mind their businesses a lot, but you also try to put try to put uh, um, involve them in yours by promoting these products. And lastly, is manage user products. And when you talk about managing user products, there should be um, privileges, let's say licenses. Everybody, a level at which or a limit to which everybody has a particular access. My own, what I can view should be different from what somebody else's can view. It just depends on your own, um, what, what you need, what the particular part you want to use in the sensors data. So um, <clears throat> the next thing we talk about the value of census data and census data is a public good used to first and foremost measure progress in sdg and national strategies and i think it will interest us to know that the census data alone takes care of 10 out of the 17 points of the sdgs so we, we if you if you conduct um, a census well and you have you have at least saved your country 10 or let's again 10 points from the SDG for your country. So we, this is what we, we, we put this here to, to reiterate the use and the benefit of census data to the public. Then secondly, we um, support evidence-based policy making, which is obvious because anything that has um, evidence is going to be very, very easy and straightforward for government to make decisions. Then satisfy demand for quick data and tailor-made services. If you have um, a robust and accurate census data, you can produce um, promptly data for certain needs and for certain needs. Then provide sampling frame for household service, which we already know, and provide information to private sector, academia, researchers, NGOs, and um, and so on. So just for <clears throat> for us to just um, note also that 
For small geographic areas or subpopulations, the census may represent the only source of information for certain social, demographic, and, et and economic characters. You know, for small geographic areas, let's say for um, localities or very, very rural villages where they don't have access to researchers or any other thing, small, little, little decisions, they depend solely on the census data. And that's what they're going to use for a very, very long time. Because if they want to provide those, they'll say, okay, as of the last census, we were told that our population, we're just 100. So if after 10 years, considering the, um, the, the death and birth rate, they'll just give a projection and that's all what's going to do they keep on using to make decisions in their in their um, society so we need to be very very careful while collecting processing and most especially disseminating the data so some example of um, census products and services what the census can give us is um published tabulations i earlier mentioned preliminary final census results which people, which most people think that that's the, that, that's where the census re, um, dissemination starts and ends. Then we have specialized or customized products by users, such as tables from the census database or self generators, self generated by users from a dashboard. If we have a platform where um, we have where where we disseminate our our census results, people can go there. And for example, if you're conducting um a, a survey on people who, who celebrate certain things you can just go there and based on one or two characteristics that, that was getting from the census results you you customize it to fit your own purpose for your own survey general interest or special interest group products we have thematic statistical or analysis group reports which is also one of um a, a, one of the very popular census products Methodolog methodolog methodological reports also then census geographic reports, including codes and classifications. You can classify um, the, the country or the economy based on certain data that was acquired from the census. We have the databases, including micro data and table oriented databases, metadata. The PES is also um, a census product. We have special audience products, like I earlier mentioned, posters, brochures, flyers, and what have you. Then key findings report, you can pick an area of interest and you critically analyze it and you bring out your key findings. Video and social media reports, which can also be a product of the census. Then we have lastly, the fact sheets. So user engagement for, for census dissemination. Like we um, earlier mentioned, we need to engage this. The census data is not meant for our consumption only, apart and not also for the government. Everybody in Nigeria is a stakeholder that should have access and be able to use the census data. So when user, user um, engagement involves when you meet with stakeholders, people that you feel needs it, which um, during our presentation over there, we mentioned that Nigeria also, we brought um we we in collaborate, collaborated the the academia while we're designing our, our questionnaire because we know that they come to us a lot to use um the census data so you bring people from all walks of life and sit down in meetings and presentations and talk about what they use um certain data to do in their own um, organization for example banks they they can if you ask do you have a bank in this area it can tell you where needs a bank, places that need schools and all that. So you need to bring them together. You make sure that the topics you are talking about um, um, require users taking into account the cost effectiveness, human resource and time availability. We should also try as much as possible during these meetings not to engage the respondent for too long because we know we are all human beings. If you are designed, if everybody wants to contribute certain question, the questionnaire will be very, very lengthy that it will not will not be able to get the time of the um, respondent. So we should try as much as possible to see how one question can um, um, can answer the need of two or three, even more um, stakeholders' um, interests. Then the consultation should, should be should um, include plan tabulation and output and development of the science census database. While we have um, the, the discussion is going, we have concluded. We should ensure that these um, consultations, all what they have said, the relevant questions that needs to be 
in the in the um, in the questionnaire should also they should also have their own their own section or segment in our application so that since those ones are key you know we have what we call the primary data and some that are the term that are secondary which are derivable but if we see that for example five six stakeholders have an interest in a particular question that it's of use to them in their own um, work of life we ensure that that particular question is included in the tabulation so that when the census results are being disseminated that one is going to just be direct it's, you can just pull it out and give it to those who need it so it should it should be developed for various stakeholder groups as mentioned that then you solicit solicit feedback from users to improve the dissemination plan like i earlier mentioned um, in the business development that we, when we say we, we manage dissemination of a product, we don't release everything at the same time. So the ones we release previous, we get feedback from people that have used them to see how we can improve when we are releasing the remaining census dissemination um, data. So feedback well, as, as, as we are releasing the, the um, census results like stage by stage, we should also put at the back of our mind that it doesn't end there. For every um, data that has been disseminated, we need to go back to those who were, are going to critically use it and see what, what you have, what you have released, how beneficial is it for them, what are the limitations, and try as much as possible to improve it in the next now going to be um, released. Another one is like I earlier mentioned, meetings. You, you, you hold meetings with them, not necessarily to, to ask them to give you um, specific questions, but you speak to them so that you know what and what they do so that you can pick you, you from there you can now decide and include it in your questionnaire and electronic questionnaires and online questionnaires like you like all know you can send them out based on survey now nowadays with using the digital um format or you can use the census website when people go in there you just put there and just say what and what would you want like to know about the country if you if you if you write it here, we can decide to include it in the census questionnaire. That's um that's an inviting you know speech for people to feel that they are being carried along all through the census um process. Then last but not the least, with um, radio, radio and TV talk shows, which is very, very um important also. So you know to collect feedback from the from the public and get a general perception of what the public needs. In, so we have to encourage these radio and TV talk shows, depending on the level. You have to also assess which particular part of the of the country. What do Ghana use this radio on a lot? The the SD of the, uh, the statistic office will come up and they will they talk about census, you know, topics. When you, when, you, when you engage in radio and TV talk shows about the census, you will, you will be, you're able to reach a wider audience. Not everybody belongs to the academia or NGOs, but the ordinary man, the layman on the street, even students might have um, topics that they want to use part of the census dissemination um, results to, to, to research on. So effective communi communication should be promoted throughout the consultation process. Um, some of the census users that um, we identified, um, government departments and ministries, universities and other research institutions, the private sector, organizations or individuals representing the economic, social, educational, cultural, or other sectors of the country. An example of this are the Red Cross, amongst others. Then we have representative or special groups, ethnic communities, religious and faith-based persons with disabilities. Like I earlier mentioned, ethnic communities would, might want to do something for their people and they will, they will depend on, they have to plan. And the number one baseline planning data is the population result that was, that was released for their locality. That's one of the reasons why um, as much as possible, we are trying to see that population results for the first time will be disseminated down to locality level no matter how small a locality is every locality should have their own distinct um population donors also are, are part of census users some national government authorities and institutions are also there then civil society um organizations 
So some, um, we also want to discuss ways to disseminate census data, most popular ones, newspaper, either print, online publication, editorial or lifestyle features, press releases, um, TV and radio coverage, like you said, if you if you are promoting the census through a particular platform, it only makes sense for you to go back to that platform and also let people know that, okay, for this particular locality, we have been on radio for so, so, so time telling you about the census, you participated and supported us, so this is your um, census result, web dissemination through websites, social media, and then um, blogs online data access that is static interactive platforms then others like comics atlas excel tables like i excel like i like i earlier mentioned every every format every um means should not 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 should be thrown away because of as much as you think that it's not relevant there are certain people that these are the particular means that catches their own um, attention so comics are also encouraged like malawi told us that they use comics that put um i am at um, student bus stops so they will just and but you know at that particular place students are the ones that make use of the, of the bus stops so when you put um comics, it's the, the the information there should be something something that is related to students either to encourage them or also to inform them about certain certain decisions um they will take and lastly is the geospatial dissemination that is the use of gis and special techniques to present analyze and distribute um census data in a spatial context this approach leverages the geographic component of census data such as location boundaries and special relationships to provide users with deeper understanding of demographic social economic and environmental patterns within a geographic area and this can be achieved through the following interactive maps that's creation of maps that are very very interactive that you can um, anybody can um, relate to we also have the special analysis where you perform special analysis to identify special patterns correlations and relationship and it, this thing can also be be made um, seen through maps or charts then the next one is customized geospatial um, products where people come and um, based on the on the geospatial domination, they custom box for their own use. For example, they for for their order for service or any other findings. Then geocoding services. We did when you say geocoding, you are you're coding a particular you're tagging location that's longitude and latitude coordinate to a particular location. So in this case, you see that addresses convert to identifiers. So when you are doing your special dissemination, those addresses will not be seen as ordinary addresses again. They are now known as um, identifiers. So you can specially integrate data with your sensors boundaries. Then the next one is API and web services. API is application um program interface where people that are in, uh, um, conducting service can come and use their own api to integrate into the geospatial um data and just use it so um, in other words we are saying that we're trying to put an end to the use of supply with ea map to my for my for my survey when you have it when you, when you have disseminated you specially people can come with their api and integrate into yours and um, continue and, and use it for to suit their own purpose. Then, lastly, training and support. Of course, if you want to put this into use, you need to train those who are going to use it to understand how to use the the interface and how this um, um this particular um, um this particular um, point has been has been used by the cartography department, whereby we recommended that people should. The, um, all departments should begin to um, learn, train and learn how to use the ArcGIS Pro, which is going to be the main platform where all the geospatial information will, will be available. And a training was conducted to that end. So you cannot use what you don't know. For example, now, if, if the Kato has done the geospatial dissemination, when um, 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 population management wants to use it to to into they want to integrate the bed bed um bed control policies and whatever they need somebody in their department who understands the rudiments of what they are doing just to come and integrate and they perform their own um analysis
then ways to promote the um, promoting use of census data via posters which can be eye catchy designs using visual means of communication such as infographics to display key facts brochures and flyers useful for promoting upcoming dissemination events like i earlier mentioned when we say promote your dissemination when you know that it, well, just uh, before you release a, um, any before you disseminate any particular aspect of the census you can print out brochures flyers to you know um, educate people make them look forward anticipate what is going to come out about a particular um, aspect of the census instructional materials for example kits for use in schools to encourage interest in census data as i earlier mentioned social media platforms such as facebook x instagram threads whatsapp communities highlighting the key results so that while we are um, we are we are browsing either facebook or instagram they'll just be like a pop-up like an, a form of, of an ad just giving the um, giving the populace information about the recently concluded um, census that at every point in you try as much as possible you reach everybody so that at least no matter no matter what somebody will not have, have not come across the census um, data then offering and promoting access to products and services on demand particularly online with the use of um, the NPC website. Like we said, we have several researchers and people who are doing different um, projects, both national and internationally. So you, you have to be uh, make, your, make yourself um, available to provide your products and services to them on demand. Yeah, we have um, some dissemination platforms were shared with us we, we are which we can use to disseminate our data but this particular one while we're there caught our interest it was recommended by um south africa that the, and they gave us the permission to download and use it for free so the links have been are incorporated there so when the slides are being shared i think we'll, we'll take time to go through my colleague from the ict has thoroughly gone through it but if there's time he will come and speak um in into it then the next recommendations the geospatial frame for dissemination which should be made available by the cartography department and um, at this point i also like to mention that this is part of the live project that was conducted during the, um, the during the last training that the cartography department um, organized to step down at gis pro a project was given to participants to um showcase um, things where they gave them frames and also questions so every department were able to integrate their own departmental use and the 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 the, the, the kind of analysis special analysis and also pre um, made maps and I, at least to a large extent from the feedback the the participants that were sent from other departments um they digested and understood their training then the next one is the statistical integration which refers to stakeholder stakeholders needs in the tabulation plan which means what um, all like I earlier mentioned, all what we know that are key from stakeholders that they will need, so that we should we don't um, have to waste time or go about against start deriving from our already or from from our deliverables. It should since we have time now, it should be included in the tabulation plan. Then lastly, uh, sorry, next is synergizing the geospatial entities with statistical team for ease of data aggregation and on-time release of provisional and final results. If we are thinking of disseminating um, census data geospatially, I think now that we have time, it's time for us to synergize. The relevant departments should sit down and see how these geospatial entities and statistical teams can be merged together so that when it's time for us to um, disseminate, it's going to be a seamless um, operation and is going to also um, um, assist us in disseminating data on time. Then um, we, can, we also recommend that the Commission can take inspiration from other countries that have completed their census and other um, even PES stages so that they can learn from them what um, they did. We have, um, it was shared with us there and they also gave us the permission to look at it and we can also pick whichever one that interests us and incorporate in as this is um, the website 
for Ghana. This is where they released, this is their own um, portal. So we can see we have where home about how to res respond dissemination. So you just click there and it gives you certain information that um, you need. This one was also shared by um, our colleagues from Kenya. KNBS. So this is their own statistical releases. This is leading economic indicators and they have their own for several years. So this particular tab addresses only the leading economic indicators. We have indicators that, that spoke about um, inflation rates and so on and so forth. So we can look at, we can look at this already established ones and key into it and also build our own to get something more robust and um, better. This was shared by the UNECA guys. It's, um, it's a UNFPA population data portal, which can also, we can also, all these um, portals were shared with us for us to look at it, leverage on them, take some, leave out some, and, all, uh, and even invent something better. Since their the aspect was done, and I'm, I'm sure they took critical um, um, cognizance to what was in trend then, so we can build on what's already um, existing. So in conclusion, um, the census is a major statistical and logistical undertaking that provides high quality and reliable demographic and social economic information about Nigeria's population for a broad range of stakeholders ranging from policymakers, researchers, researchers, and international organizations. To this end, a census dissemination strategy needs to be an integral part of the overall planning of the census because the supply of census products and services goes far beyond the first couple of years after the census. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amor, for this uh, and I think we are also now. So, as usual, uh, we are going to uh, two questions or comments from the two, and maybe two of these tables. I need that online comment. So, there's one. No, well, okay. Two, two. Yeah. I, I don't, don't know, know why agenda. agenda. It's only why I'm not so good. I'm not so good. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of my PM. Um, are so good. Uh, uh, what of I think I've, I've, I've been privileged to be the data officer for the termination and census department for almost, almost 10, 13 years now. Um, very wonderful work done, very wonderful work done. And uh, as far well as that, here in the commission, people ask for data, especially the students. The level of data demand from that, as, that area has always been tremendous, honestly tremendous. And um, we have done well in terms of the way we submit our own data, you know, through all the, all the, all the agencies of government, they always come here, just, just name them. Um, when you are trying to present what, what, what you have done, before now, what we normally do is that every month, we compile the list of data requests from various stakeholders and send to chairman. That's what we normally do every month. Those type of data they're looking for, you know, uh, you know what are their what, what are their requirements and so on and more, more often than not they want you to send them use of those data so i wanted to hear from 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 you guys what you guys gave them when you got to the, the program how do you put the, the, their own data how do you go about their own data i didn't hear i, had, I saw a lot of, of the UFPA, other other countries south africa and so on but i wanted to see how you guys you know give out their own data which is not captured here so, and I also do recommend uh, my sister director and, and CM and, and, and CTA here that uh, what we have to do is to please let us ensure that we have 
data unit in every state. I mean, data unit in every state. Because most of these students that come from states, you ask them, what can they go to your state? They say that they don't have it there. And they, they pay money to come here. So I, I recommend that in every state, there must be simulation units in every state. That will help them to build this issue of constant traveling from, from state to federal. To federal. And, uh, and so far, like what my director is doing now, he wants to put more life into that unit. That's why there was a committee that he set up to work on those that unit to make sure that whenever we are trying to give up data, that is going to be the best. And uh, honestly, so far, so good. And more importantly, sir, again, people are asking for locality results. That is, that is the major request. But we cannot give it, we can't give it out. So please, whatever that must be done to ensure that this coming census, that locality results, you know, will be month because that is what they're asking for, essentially. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, um, directors of CTA. Okay, sir, thank you. I'm going to start with like, um, my name is Yahya Musa from Census. Okay. Yahya Musa from Census Department. Uh, Sorry, sir. Um, so, uh, I've been listening to the uh, presentations from yesterday, um, and this one got my attention, like something popped up while you were talking. Um, I had the opportunity to work um, during the formal preparation as a recruitment review team. So, <clears throat> you were talking about design. So, I think my, my, my own my own um opinion like i just want to bring something up to the ict because i think as you are collecting data the quality of your data depends on who depends very much on who are collecting this data because if they get you the wrong data i don't think you can however much you can manage those data i don't think you can get the result you want and then while we were going on doing the recruitment we had i don't know if this i want to put it like a recommendation for ict we had problem from our first day of the review we had problem from the first day so let's say in the first place we it was very difficult for us to generate data for even the ad hoc staffs because of the problem we had from the the, the site. So I'm somehow recommending that as you are dealing with that design for, for the further preparations you are going to go through, I think if you can if you can bring those people that work earlier so that they can you can discuss with them their challenges. It's already a challenge we faced. So I think correcting those things will help us and make make the thing go faster than uh uh, go 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 as much fast as we want it to be. That I, I think that will be very very important. As much uh, as you want those data to be correct. Thank you very much.
regard to ICT. I could not hear him very well. And I was, I'm very glad that he was able to stand up and speak because if he's able to speak and there's some observation he, he observed during the time of this, better we know it and put it in, in proper perspective. So I don't know whether you can find soon or somebody there to help you so that I can win ICT here, can know our problem because he may not know your problem unless somebody tells you there's a problem you're having. So let's know he has, okay, he can write it. You can see the director of ICT after the Good, see the director of ICT after the this thing. Oh, see, I didn't look up. We call it the director of ICT. You understand? Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my boss, the CTA, Albaka Febwa is my name. Erudite, ontological. An epistemological presentation, a very well thought out presentation, which took the basic nuances of what a workshop should be. These are the takeaways from a workshop. This is what I expect. You see, you are stepping down something, down what truly happened. You can see that even in this presentation, emerging issues are very key well articulated but there's only one pitfall there the nomination from census department was not from dissemination department i don't know who did the nomination that is why harrison raised this question because of that there are no basic inputs on how nigeria does its own dissemination that's the desk officer 15 years on that desk and you are going, you took an analysis person at the pitfalls of MPC. We should face professionalism. You are going on course, not because you know A, B, C. No. Go to my office. There's nobody from Edo State. Go to my technical support, 12 of them. There's nobody from Edo State. There's nobody from South South. Nobody. Because I believe in professionalism. I want to succeed. I don't care where you come from. Who can do the job? Here now, I also noted some things. What are the basic forms of data that are frequently asked in Nigeria? You say what the man said. Because census department every month, we send data requests to the chairman. Everything is there. If an officer from census department destination unit had been in this training, I'm telling you, there would have been better contributions. And even the portal they've been displaying would have had something on the portal for them because we liaise with PAD department and we have a we have a National Protection Commission portal. There's a portal, I don't know how far it's running between the director of ICT and they should be able to tell us that. You came here, South Africa, Kenya, Mayoga. I know these are the Baba, these are the giants of uh, uh, the population and democracy. I agree. But no matter how small, Nigeria is doing something. So please, in future, when nominations like this are being done, we are in our last legs. I'm going, I'm leaving the commission soon for those of you that are here. Let us emphasize professionalism and fairness in everything. Thank you very much. Once again, I commend this team. Thank you very much. I would not like to answer <laughs> the I, I would not like to answer about nominations or not. Now you are the director, so we hope we look forward to better nominations. Uh on a more serious note, uh, from this presentation, I think the dissemination component is what we have not paid attention to in the census process. So and you can see. I don't think to say the system we have here is a dissemination system. Let us look at what sister organizations are doing. You have seen the website of Kenya. You have seen how these materials are presented. Somebody do not need to write a letter to the chairman, to the DG, and it comes to the director census and the dissemination unit. We just have to move with time. 
So, uh, and this is where we are. Whether we do the census in this line or not, what I would like to tell the director of census is maybe immediately from today to go and set up a dissemination team that encompassing planning and research, PAD, ICT, and uh, to start working on our sense of dissemination plans. So that at the end of the day, we'll have something like Kenya, we'll have something like Ghana and other countries where all these things are visualized. And let the committee develop develop please whatever department that can add value to the process so please what, what i'm saying is that after after our census after our census we should be able not to expect somebody to write the chairman before he gets what he wants is that clear? Because this time is this time has passed. So I think uh, a director uh, census would like the team to make periodic presentations because this is the gift of time that we are talking about. These are the things we have not we have not done. So we have to ensure that we do it uh, effectively. If you look at, I I had the privilege of looking at our website just yesterday or two days ago. There is nothing there. There is nothing there. Why are they not loading it? You understand? Even the public, uh, the, the planning and research, all these NDHs NDH that we have done, there is virtually nothing, nothing. there. Nothing. So, so NBS will take our teams, put in their website, and take credit for it. And we have been talking about this every day, every day, every day. I know even under my watch, we have done more than 15 surveys, and all of them have reports, have everything. So who is responsible for the commission's website? Why are these not there? Why do people need to write letters to get information on things that should be in the commission's website? No, we are talking generally. I'm not here to. You are given the opportunity to talk. It's not issue of talking to ourselves. It's not issue. Every is not issue of talking to ourselves. These are basic things that everybody should know they should be there. That is just that. If we don't, if we don't have these materials, if we don't have these materials, it's understandable. The materials we have, where are they? Who is responsible for putting them there? All of us, let us take the NPC website. I don't think even the population, put, there are a lot of materials, 1,001 things we are doing here. They should be there. And that is what we are saying, and that is what the simulation is saying. You understand? We all know the effort we have put towards this census. And any time we go internationally and say, this is what we are doing, we are being commended. But somebody in your backyard will say, NPC have not done anything. While we are here, clean ourselves because we are not visual. We, are, we cannot be seen outside. So these are my points. Thank you. There is nothing on our website. But who is the, that's an, whose responsibility? Nobody has answered. Whose responsibility? So that we Good afternoon, man. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Sorry, I cannot match the CM's level of enthusiasm. So you'll pardon me eh, for that. I think it's working. It should be working. It's working. It's working. I can hear you. All right, so uh, thank you to the presenter for both uh, the content and the delivery. I have just three lessons for this Nigeria. And one of them that has been taken away is the lack of a dissemination plan for this census. I'll talk to that. But before that, just a general lesson that I want to share with you from Ghana. Yes. That are statistical products, and I'm happy you call them products because throughout your presentation, you're referring to them as, because they are products. Now yes, it's not just data. What we produce in the census is more than data. data. Products. So we have to be prepared to do. So what we do, which you didn't speak about, uh, 
like you did not mention it explicitly, you probably alluded to it, is that at the beginning we have to have what we call things as product dissemination plan. What is in that plan? That plan should have a background of the general data dissemination or product dissemination policy for the organization that midwives the census. The policy framework. Number one. Number two, you should have a description of the product. What do you expect to share with the public? And that may require a bit of uh, audience segmentation. Number three would be the audiences themselves. Who do you want to give products to? And how do you want to give them? Number four is a time frame. So when, what's coming when? Sometimes I've been to countries where after the dissemination of, or the launch of the census results, which is normally preliminary, the first one, people, even the journalists, live and say, this is all, this is all that, all that money and all that time and all those questions. Because they don't understand that these things are done in installments and we don't tell them. They are thinking also oh, this is it. But if you have a plan, which is going to accompany the release of the, the launch of the preliminary results. So they know after this, this is coming, we should expect this, we should expect this, this is what it will contain, and this is when it will. So they know, even if it's a two year frame or three year frame, so they have a time frame for doing that. And then to accompany that, they should have uh, frequently asked questions about the census process, not about the products. It could be about the products as well, but about the process. So it helps them to relieve the process because it could be several months from the census implementation. So you leave to remind them of a few things to help them in interpreting the results thereof. We used this to great effect in Ghana. This is what we published at the beginning, even before the product started coming up. So when people came for the launch, they knew exactly what they were expecting and they got exactly what they were expecting. And it became very, very popular that uh, we did not have to do, to send long invitations for subsequent dissemination activities. So maybe this is something we can learn from the uh, director when you get around to putting together a census dissemination plan, which you should. Now, my three uh, pieces of silver for Nigeria from this is this. One, the census products or the census dissemination plan or strategy should start in the pre in the preparation period. It's a pre-census activity, not post. And this is the mistake most guys. Well, because all this conversation we are having around the census on the social media the fun, the misinformation, the questions, you know, uh, are going to rear their heads when you take the results to people. And they may be the basis on which people are going to reject the results. So it's mm -hmm. supposed to be a continuous affair from the beginning, so that everything that we speak on radio now, we should not really connect it with the eventual acceptance of the results. Because the results mean nothing if people eventually reject them. It does not matter how good the data is. Sometimes it may not even wait to find out how good the data is or the products are. They just decide that based on what we have had already, there is no hope here. So I just want to remind us, Ryan in particular, that the dissemination plan should have already started. And all these things that we are sending out, the FAQs should be part of that. Okay. Uh, that is number one. Number two, when you plan your dissemination, you have to respect and acknowledge everyone, including the public. When you go to the census, we reach out to everybody and we say, we want everybody to participate because everyone counts. But usually when we disseminate a product, we forget that. 
and uh, we focus on a few people, mostly public. Yeah. The government is just higher level, manage yourself. In the determination strategies, you never, you know, workshops, you never find low level officials, you find heads of departments, you know, that kind of thing, the deputies, and the technical work, technical people who do the work are really in there. And then you forget, completely forget the private sector. Sometimes you even forget the development partners and even the public. So I know you spoke to this. We have to be able to generate products. It could be the same product, but the way it presented should be audience specific, should be targeted to very specific audiences so that everybody feels that they have been acknowledged and that they are getting something from the census process. And this is again, just again going with Ghana again, something that they have done really well. And they have done after the main, you know, dissemination workshops to public offices and open. then they went to the universities, the people who really generate knowledge. And they presented products that are specific to that category, to that audience, okay? And they are going from university to university, talking to professors and students, and uh, you know how to access the data, what they can do with the data, and so on and so forth, and how they can partner with Ghana Statistical Services to be able to produce what they want, including encouraging students to use census data for their dissertations, their thesis, and also and so on and so forth. And so the uptake has been, you know, wonderful for Ghana. So this is something that, uh, and now they are beyond that now. Now they are taking census data to the classrooms, not to the universities again. They are going beyond the universities now, and they are now building a portal where schools can access census information. You know, is it census information? You know, that are relevant to them at that level for knowledge, for education, for teaching, and so on and so forth. Even the geospatial framework showing people instead of now showing them uh, PDF apps, they are now showing them that. That's what the portal is going to do. So these are things that uh, we can learn from, uh, given that uh, we are just beginning to put this together. And then the last one is uh, uh, data journalism. There's somebody from public affairs here. He spoke here, so I'm sure there are others. Let's think about that as we plan the dissemination of the census data. It's a highly digital census, which is going to be released, the product should be released in a highly digital era and digital environment, where people consume less and less information. So data journalism, being able to say using less words. This is what people want now. The comics, a picture speaks a thousand words, because different people can interpret it differently. Infographic, uh, visualizations, data journalism should be a large component of uh, our census dissemination plans. Let's make sure that as we prepare to undertake the census, we also create the necessary environment for its acceptance and its utilization by making sure that people see the process as credible, as transparent, and accessible for them all the way. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, City as usual. Uh, so I'll give her one to respond, to what she can respond. Thank you very much. By the on um, dissemination, you said you could not see where our own was showcased. So, like I earlier mentioned, the presentations were in two formats. One, the format was for those who have conducted the, conducted their censuses and <coughs> the, the medium, medium and strategy they, they used to disseminate. disseminate. And, and we, we fell on that later, which we are preparing for our own census and the strategies we are we are putting in place to ensure that we have very very insightful user um, engagement in fairness to the census department representative he actually mentioned what you said 
that um, re requests are being, um, he, 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 first, first of all, he, he, he presented how we have um, disseminated our past censuses and also requests that comes from that medium of dissemination, like you earlier mentioned that, and he also said that people also come to request again and it's being um, sent to the chairman and the ICT representative there also showed to them at that time under construction um, an intended portal or website where dissemination um, would take place. And like I mentioned earlier, the ones shared by the South African, he sat with them and they extensively reviewed it. And I'm sure um, it's been almost two years now, but, um, but after then, uh, at least I know that for the first, for the next three months, he was working with them on building that perhaps if there's still time, maybe he to speak to come and speak to us where they are now um, at that. Then secondly, you said um, one of the requests that is that very frequent is that of locality, which um, while I was speaking, I mentioned it. And we should also know that apart from numbers, there is much more attached to locality. And like we said earlier, our planning for census dissemination starts from the period of our EAD days. So when you are, is the locality that are being presented to the census as, that had been demarcated, those are the ones that their results are going to be published. So um, as I speak now, my director is working extensively, ensuring that she leaves no stone unturned in, in the aspect of locality. All staff of the department are working um, rigorously on the locality classification, because apart from numbers, you might um, disseminate locality results and somebody can bring it up that I'm not after the figures, but what I'm looking at is that you have wrongly classified my locality. So apart from figures, there are so many other things attached to locality, which we um, it was part of the EAD plan. And we thank God to have gotten us to this stage that we can say that we have distinct population we would have, but we have distinct um, boundaries for each locality that has been identified on ground by the locals. So we are ensuring with the leadership of our director to ensure that all localities that comes from the field that we have on in the database, we can't say we'll have it 100%, but to a very, very large extent, we want to ensure that what we have is um, is accurate. Then we'll now, hand it, we'll now begin to think of um, gazetting. After gazetting, and we have it in the, 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 the database, sensor department will be able to disseminate results to locality level. Then the last question that I think is my capacity to respond to is the one that spoke about managing of user products. Like I mentioned, let me give an example from my department. We just, it's not yet of, but we, we're just working on a set for just for our departmental use. We have a particular, um, let's say like a hub where we are showcasing our EAD deliverables. And in there, for example, we can just put um, 700, is from Abia State. So when you say that when you're managing user products, it's there, it's flashy. But if the if a user out there is not from maybe a particular unit, you're not you're, you're not at that particular EA. So you are you're, you're going to be given um access based on your what you need. Some people their own access ends in just viewing, while some has maybe one or two. Um, and further operations you can perform. But at the end of the day, you know, you cannot just dish out all census information out there. You just give them what you, um, the, let's say, like, the headlines, and when they need details, they'll have to come to, um, you know, at a particular level, they'll have to come and, and ask for it. So when you say you're managing, you're just giving people um, privileges based on what and what um, they need, like um, the locality, you know, let's say user A, that needs that um, data on so, so 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 should not have access to somebody else that needs another data, except if of course you want to integrate both and it's, it's clearly stated that the purpose of your need will need um, um the two data. I don't know if it's clearer now. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the presenter for the responses. Uh, I think we are coming to the end of this. I want to apologize most sincerely for the call. I think we thank general service to run an audit of this place to see what we can do.
most importantly, I want to talk to my colleagues in the management level and uh, let us look at continue hiding of things that should be in public domain as a form of dissemination. Will not have, it's not happening in the National Population Commission. You know, let us look at things that we have done. These things are done with taxpayers' money. If they need the information, let them get it. You understand? There are, there are things that are supposed to be out there on the census platform or on the commission's platform as part of the product of what we have done so far. So let us look at this. Continue to keep in things. This is secret. This is secret. It's not going to help us. It, it rather complicates the issues. Something like locality, something should be on the out. It should, should be there. Everybody should see. So if people have comments that their locality is not well spent or it's not this, we can correct it. So because at the end of the day, we are going to release this census. So I think, I, I think we need to look at those things critically. And uh, the census website that we are working on, Aboho, we meet immediately after now. If the, if the consultant is not ready to continue, we look for another one to continue that project with. So uh, tomorrow, there's going to be a little bit uh, tweak in change of program uh, because the chairman has directed all directors and some few staff to be in another workshop of civil registration. And I think chairman's directive supersedes any other one. So you can see the revised program for our continuation of this presentation. Uh, we know that Friday is a mock period for all the people in the states and also some of us here. So we'll try as much as possible to start at 10 o'clock. We have the first presentation and then we have the second presentation and uh, uh, the second presentation and uh, there are three presentations. Can we take all? So, so can we take one on, on Friday, two, two on Monday? If that's the consensus, fine. Then we can still make it 10 30, the first or number five, and then six and seven on, on Monday. On Monday. Yes. I think if that's the consensus, yes, madam. Yeah. and you say from the parents and what is something and then you make sure the character is that means it's a bit of 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 a There are a lot of things. You understand? There are a lot of things that we need to put there. You understand? Even the census questionnaire, it needs a lot of dissemination. Just the census questionnaire needs a lot of dissemination. Every Nigerian is supposed to understand the contents of the census questionnaire and even how to answer it before the time comes. So these are and sometimes we find out that even staff do not have access to those things. That's not the issue. Okay, on that note, please, thank you very much. Uh, we call it a day.